My name's Rob Inglis, I'm the, the, the Elders Livestock Production Coordinator, so uh, as well as coordinating a team of 15 livestock production advisors around Australia, uh, I also consult to clients, to Elders clients. I'm a nutritionist by trade, I work for the New South Wales DPI for six years in the ruminant nutrition section. My specialty is ruminant nutrition, so that generally speaking I work with clients on, on how to improve their nutrition, so some of that might be with feedlots or pastoral rangelands environments or this more intensive cropping areas. So our role is to work with the livestock and wool team to make sure that our clients are getting the best possible service to go with their marketing service. This project came about following an information day we held with Western Land Service at Bulligal, where we had a number of speakers from MLA uh, from AWI and we did discuss this topic with a number of growers around the Bulligal area and we sort of generated some interest and from that uh, with the help of uh, Western Land Service we've uh, formed a group of six properties or six producers around the Bulligal area. Collectively uh, they probably run between 80 and 100,000 ewes between them uh, over obviously hundreds of thousands of hectares. They're all good young uh, eager, progressive producers that yeah, we hope they'll be there. The early adopters and, and people will follow and see what they're doing and follow. A producer demonstration site is designed to, to prove, if you like, or to ground truth. Previous research has been done by various universities. So the basis of this project was some research that was done at Trangi in 2009 where they compared the weight of, of ewes or ewe weaners at nine months of age from two different self-replacing flocks and then measured their reproductive performance in the following six years. And what that data showed was the light ewes raised one lamb, the heavy ewes raised up to six lambs. So there was a five lamb differential over their reproductive life. So, you know, clearly a ewe that produces one lamb in a life compared to a ewe that produces six, it's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? Which one you'd want to keep. The project is designed to help self-replacing merino flocks, particularly or merino producers, manage their ewe weaners more efficiently. So what we tend to find is in the average merino flock, some of the best genetics, and they could be twin lambs out of a maiden ewe, because of the environment, they're, they're generally smaller than their siblings or their contemporaries, if you like. They could be genetically the best sheep on the property, but when the classer comes, he takes off all those light sheep because they're not, they haven't got the weight, so they get taken out of the system and as I said they could be genetically the best sheep on the station. So what we want to do is, is lift the weight of those lighter ewe weaners so that when the classer comes he's picking the best sheep based on their genetic merit not based on how well they were fed as a lamb and as a weaner. We're trying to take all that noise out if you like. We've drafted three groups off so we've got a medium if you like which is the flock then we've taken a heavy group and a light group out of each age group of ewe lambs. So we've tagged them accordingly and we'll measure the reproductive performance of those heavies compared to the average of the flock compared to the light. So what we'll do is we'll take scanning data, so all these ewes will be scanned at, uh, at 13 to 14 weeks of pregnancy to establish whether they're A in lamb or B if they're carrying twins. So we'll have scanning data and then we'll measure at weaning time, we'll measure which one of those ewes has raised one or two lambs. So the science says that they'll all get pregnant, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm sure everyone who's run sheep would know that when a ram jumps the fence he'll get a, a little ewe lamb in lamb, but, but she won't carry that lamb through to weaning. And, and because that pregnancy will obviously set her back, it's, it's likely that she'll, she'll fight or fail to reproduce next year. So weight really is king in this job. The heavier they are at, at nine months of age and the heavier they are at 12 months and then 18 months of age, the more likely they are to raise a lamb to wean a, a weanable lamb. Now as I said, the science says that those lighter ones, those lighter ones during puberty, because they didn't get the, the you know, they, they were later born or they had a twin sister to compete with, generally speaking, aren't, don't hit those target benchmark weights at puberty and uh, the science shows us that they won't, they won't be reproductively efficient for the rest of their life. What we'd like to see is those lighter ewe weaners will get fed a supplement or have a better pasture allocated to them. So when the classer comes at 12 months, um, he'll be, they'll all be even, they'll all be the same weight, size and shape in a perfect world. He'll be then classing on the genetics of the sheep, not on whether they've been well fed or not. So the lighter sheep will hopefully get 
better nutrition so that, they, so that we're evening up the, the ledger. A little bit, little bit of money spent now to get that weight on those ewe weaners, it will be money saved later on because those sheep are less likely to require, you know, further supplementation further, you know, later on in life. And we know for a fact that the earlier you start with a sheep, the smaller the animal, the cheaper it is to feed, obviously, because it has a lower maintenance requirement. So, so getting weight on early in life is a lot more efficient than trying to do it later on. As long as they've been able to catch up and, and compensate for being born late, or being born a twin, or being born out of a maiden ewe, which which will all which all compromise um, milk production, you know, birth weight, and and post birth growth, I suppose. Yeah. The last thirty years, that particularly I'll, I'll use the Merino as example, we've we've gone from a from a wool producer to a dual purpose animal. So. Nearly every flock in Australia now would be making as much, if not more, from, from meat production as they are from wool production. So certainly the, the pendulum has swung heavily in favour of meat production. Ergo, um, it's more important that these ewes have a lamb every year because relying on a, on a ewe to run, you know, to run as a weather and just cut your wool is not, is not making a profit. So, so reproductive performance because of the, the improved meat market, or lamb market, mutton market, is more important than it was when I first started, certainly. So things have changed. The eye can be very deceiving. I've, I know some very, very good judges of sheep who we've had draft off what they regard as the heaviest ewes in the flock and there's been a, a 10 kilo weight differential. So, so you can't see what's under the skin, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's probably the, yeah, the biggest handbrake. I guess people look at a sheep and, and, and look, don't get me wrong, there are some very good judges of sheep out there, but it, I defy anyone to tell me how much weight there is beneath that skin without using a set of scales, yeah. So what, we, what we'd like to see is more people buy yourself a set of scales and be a bit more uh, discerning, I suppose, with your, with your management of your, your ewe weaners, because they're the future of your business. And, and on every flock in Australia, it's the young ewes, the, the one and a half year olds, if you like, that, that are probably the most important age group on the station and more often than not what we're seeing is that that, that group of views their, their reproductive performances is poor. <laughs>